So here in this quick tutorial, we're going to have a look at how we change a few basic things with type generators that we're placing on the timeline. So we're going to have a look at how we change the font of a type, how we change the color of type, and then how we change the size of type, how we change the line spacing and also the case of our type, and then also how we change the tracking, so the distance between each of the letters in our type. So basically, I've added from the titles and generators, from the bumper and open the title, the basic title, and I've just dragged a few of these down to the timeline so we can kind of quickly work through this. So the first thing is how do we change our font in Final Cut Pro? And there's a couple of ways of doing this. The first is we can highlight this and then come up to the inspector at the top right. If you don't see your inspector, just go to Window, Show in Workspace, and make sure that you have the inspector visible here. So make sure there's a check next to it. And then once we're in there, you can see we've got these two drop down menus for font. So one is the drop down menu for the, the font itself. And then one is the drop down menu if there's a different cut of the font. So you'll see different things for each of the, the fonts. So if we go back to Helvetica Neu here, you'll see we have regular, italic, thin, bold, and a whole bunch of other different cuts of that same font. And so that'll be different for each of the fonts. The other way that we can change our font is to come up to this drop down, which is normal here. And we can come into our 2D or 3D styles and we can select font styles from this menu here. So basically we're selecting different fonts. We're also selecting the styles that come with those fonts as well. If we have added styles to our fonts and we want to set everything back to the default, then we can use these little hooked arrows to reset our fonts. And we can do the same for things like our 3D text. And you can see all of these options for things like 3D text have a checkbox next to them so we can turn them on and off if we want to. So coming back to this, we've got our font at the basic level, and then also the cut of that font, which will be different for each of the fonts. We can then change the, the size of our font here, and we'll have a look at a couple of things we can change uh, for the size. Now I've got the whole line of type selected here. If I select an individual word and then come here, I can change that particular word. So basically we can have different fonts within the same line, which you may want for design purposes, be careful as you do that, make sure that you're making something look great, not overcooking the number of fonts that you have. But basically anything that you have selected here will allow you to add different fonts. So you can kind of mix and match the fonts that you have in one line of text and kind of incorporate different fonts into your, your design there. So that's how to change the font. If we're looking to change the color of our type, then you can see here, we did change the color of the font before to blue by selecting, again, some of these 2D and 3D styles. But if we just wanna make a basic change to the color, then we can highlight our text and we're gonna scroll down to the face here. And you can see we can show that. I've got a couple of options here. We can replace it with a fill, a gradient, or a texture. So I'm just gonna change my Helvetica to a bold here and we'll increase the size. Then we can choose from this drop down any color that we want. Or if we wanted to keep things consistent, rather than clicking the little arrow here, we can click the box. And here we can select any one of the swatches that I've already pre-selected. Or if you have specific RGB values, then you can enter those here. So anything from zero to 255 is your RGB value. And so you can set your sliders or type in a value that you want into the options here. So once I've got the color that I want, I can drag that across to this list of colors and I can save that for later. So basically it allows you to create consistency between different parts of your design within your edits or any other print material, other design work you're doing by keeping these RGB values consistent for particular design elements. So that's how we do a basic change of the color. If we choose gradient, then we'll get a couple of different options here. So with the gradient, we have a little drop down menu and you can see I've got the left hand gradient here, the color, and basically I then get a option for each of those colors. So now when I'm changing this, you can see it's changing the top part of that gradient. And then I can add other color points on my gradient as well. So I can change this from being one color to being multiple colors within this gradient. So again, being careful with that, making sure you're not kind of overcooking it too much, but using the gradients can give you a nice kind of texture and style to your colors. This 
top box that we have here is the opacity so we can actually make part of this transparent so you can see I've got transparency for the whole line here but if I add in another spot I can make one bit fully opaque and I can make one half of this type kind of fade out so you can see the top of my type is fading out here and then I can move the midpoint there to decide where that's going to fade out. So we've got opacity options within our color as well. Again, if I hit this little hook arrow at the top left, it's going to reset it back to default. So if you get to the point where you're like, wow, I've created some crazy gradient and I don't need that, then you can work on that. We've got some other options for gradient as well, like linear or radial, and then also the angle of our gradient as well. We've jumped back to color here now. And so we'll just, again, we'll just select one single color for our type here. So we did kind of briefly change the size of our type before. So we'll have a look at this third option here. So changing the size can be as simple as moving the slider up and down to change the size. Or again, if we are selecting individual words or letters within our type, we can change those individual words or letters. So we can basically control any particular word or letter within an entire line of type. So we've got some nice options here for changing the size of our type. And then we've got some options for vertical alignment and the alignment of our paragraphs in here as well. If we come on to the next one here, we're gonna have a look at how we change the line spacing. So in print, this is called leading, but in Final Cut Pro for the video here, it's called line spacing. And basically we're changing the line spacing here for all the, the lines that we have selected. So you can see when I slide this line spacing to the right, it's increasing the line spacing or decrease in the line spacing, we can make our text overlap itself if we come back to the left here, or we can increase the line spacing across to the right there. We can also select an individual line and it's changing the line spacing for the line below. So if I decrease this, you can see it's just changing that one bit of line spacing. This I find is useful if I'm changing my type to be all caps and I wanna fit within a block. So if I change this to all caps down here and increase the all caps size to 100%, then first of all, we'll change this all to bold. And then line by line, I can increase different lines of the type size here, but then also use the line spacing to kind of tighten things up. So we can create these nice kind of block type designs within Final Cut Pro by modifying the line spacing and also the size of the type as well and then the case. If we select the last option here, this is our tracking. So I'm gonna select my layer here and then the tracking is the space between the letters. So I'm gonna make this all caps again and just change that to 100%. And so now you can see the tracking will change the distance between the letters. So basically, we're increasing the distance between the letters along that line or decreasing it and making things overlap. So we'll leave that nice and spaced out. So that's a quick overview of how to change these different type elements within Final Cut Pro. Hopefully this is useful, gives you a little insight into some of the control you've got over changing the color, changing the tracking spacing, line spacing, and the font within your text editor within Final Cut Pro. And if you do have any questions, then please leave them below. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you on the next tutorial.